Hey everybody, welcome back to Up The Vibe, and today I'm joined by Walter Rucker, Paul Hamden and Cyan to discuss their extensive contact with the Zetas. Hi Paul and Cyan. G'day, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. And hi Walter. Good day, Uncle Joe. <laughs> Paul and Cyan, I wonder if you could start by introducing yourself and uh, talk a little bit more about how this, this contact developed. Uh, my contact started probably when I was about uh, 18 months old. The, the Zetas used to come into the room. Uh, when I was five, um, I was found outside of a locked house um, laying on the lawn. I, I had basically been on crafts and put back down into the front yard. Uh, it was really late at night. Uh, it just became a normal contact situation, I guess, that most people would class as abduction or something. But uh, when um, I was 18, a craft came and myself and three friends uh, we saw the craft about, I don't know, maybe 10 metres away. And the, the Zetas, they made the side of the craft clear and we could see them and they could see us. Uh, then when I was about 28, they came and uh, we had a bit of a, a tussle in regards to uh, being taken. And uh, they did, we sort of, we had a chat afterwards and I just said, I'm not doing this anymore. Basically, if you want, you know, contact, do it properly, don't don't play those games. Uh, when I was about, um, I don't know, 50, we were able to talk the Zetas into bringing a craft. And so they uh, landed a craft in Malaysia and I had 20 people with me when it landed and the Zetas came out and walked around. Uh, so this is obviously the condensed version. And um, yeah, we have craft all the time come and not just ones that are sort of flashes in the sky or anything, but um, ones that we know are there and that we can uh, record if we want, but we don't film, but we can record audio if we want to. So yeah, we have a lot of contact and the Zetas have healed a lot of people. I mean, just so many people as well through the mm -hmm. contact that we've had, so. And, and Cyan? Um, <clears throat> where do you start? Um, I, I guess I've had, uh, I have conscious, recollection of contact with the beaters, uh, beings I came to know as the Zetas um, from four, four and a half years old. Um, I first remember that uh, creating a situation whereby they brought me a small boy uh, to play with, which sounds very strange, uh, in, in my lounge where I was living. Um, there was no reasonable excuse for the boy to be there, and I recall them standing around observing us play in a very natural play environment um, except we were surrounded by a group of I don't know how tall they were when you were in four everybody looks massive but at least five foot tall um, deep to beings just watching um, I've had numerous contacts with them over the years uh, to list them all we'd be here for hours um, various procedures taking place uh, contact on craft, being taken on craft, um, then being in, my, in the room with me, being taken out of the room by them. None of it's through, none of it's through hypnosis, it's all memory. Uh, I, can, I don't need any hypnosis to recall what's going on. Um, now I work as a medium and have done for a long time. The beings that work with us talk through me a little and obviously they've been doing that before for a long time as well which is great because now we can get some answers as to some of the experiences we had as children. And how did you two meet each other? On craft. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we met when we, when we were both eight years old. At the same time. At the same time. <laughs> okay. And did you know uh, that the... Well, I guess when you met not outside the craft, did you know that the craft is where you met or did you kind of work that out after no we didn't we didn't know initially um <laughs> i i as i said i was sitting as a medium and developing for spirit connection and physical mediumship and my the people i sat with weekly began to say they were seeing a, the being from communion transfigured over my face i didn't even know what that was i had i but I wasn't interested in, in, in anything like that. So I didn't know what they were talking about. I ignored them for months. And then at some point, 
I, look, I decided to look it up because I kept insisting what they were seeing was happening. And when I looked it up, I saw no human face, obviously, no communion at all. Um, at that point, I decided I needed to find out what's going on. And I went onto a, a website called uh, pm for You, which was hosted by a man called Rob Foy, who was involved in the skull experiments. And on that website, forum, the chat forum, I found Paul, who was um, running a discussion group about extraterrestrial contact in uh, physical mediumship circles. And so we started talking. That was, I don't know, 15 years ago or so. When I first got to that website, I saw a picture of Paul. And I uh, instantly recognized him without recognizing him, which is, sounds very strange. But you know, when you walk past someone, you go, I'm sure I know that person. It yes. was like that kind of a reaction. Okay. It was like, I know that person. I need to talk to that person. I don't know why I need to talk to that person. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how I know them, but I just have to. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so I did. <laughs> and here we are. Yeah. And did you have the same? Paul, did you say, I know that person? No, not at all. So, <laughs> um, interesting, isn't it, how it all works. Screen memories yeah. work differently for everybody. So, um, this is quite a complicated conversation. I keep saying this to everybody. You know, we have to condense all this information to very short blocks. It doesn't really work in regards to sort of communicating effectively. But with the... Um, with the Zetas, it uh, depends on the relationship with the Zetas. It depends on the type of screen memory you have. It depends on what you're meant to remember as well. Um, you, you've got to understand, because we're both mediums, and uh, I've been training with the Zetas for many years. I don't know how many years now. <clears throat> because when they come through, they can actually be seen over the top of me as with Siam. They become themselves when they're talking to us. And so they, they then bring with them their abilities as well. Mm -hmm. Their abilities are, are known to the, the people that are sitting in the room. The room shifts, the energy shifts in the room, uh, and they're able to perform certain functions, like create synthetic quantum environments. They can do lots of different things. And so when we say, did I know Cyan? Yeah, I guess on some level I would have known her, but I didn't know her consciously. That's the difference. Um, it was only once we started talking and I started you know, getting some of the screen memory stuff drop away, I thought, this is a really interesting process. I went and spoke to the Zetas about it and they said, yeah, look, this is what's happened. And they explained it to us what happened. It was pretty interesting because there's an age difference. And for both of us to be on craft at eight years old, obviously, there's got to be some level of time compression taking place. Okay, yeah. And uh, when um, all these events happening, when you said growing up, when these, these contacts were happening, was any of that, do you think, initiated by you, whether consciously, subconsciously, or was it all kind of random in a way? No, look, so humans uh, in the past were, were contacted um, and had, um, you know, cell cellular matter taken like, a, you know, the off scoop marks, yeah. uh, because the consciousness of... Uh, the hybrid mind, which is the spirit mind and the ET mind coming together, requires that the physical form actually be vibrating at a correct frequency for the cellular consciousness, cellular consciousness and the consciousness to be mapped correctly together. And so this is why a lot of hybrids and people that are taken uh, have scoop marks because in the past they were looking to try to work out what was the potential for uh, races to actually acclimate with human society. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, um, I, I didn't instigate anything. I, I, I actually didn't want to instigate anything. I never wanted anything to do with extraterrestrials. Anytime they came near me, I told them to go away. I'm probably the only person on the planet that doesn't like or didn't like extraterrestrials at all. Mm -hmm. Every time they came to me, I just told them to leave. I wasn't interested in anything that they had to say. If extraterrestrials uh, tried to do anything, I would just turn and walk away. Mm -hmm. So it took a hell of a lot of convincing for them to work with me because I just had wanted nothing to do with them. So, so, but there's there's probably some people listening right now who are very eager to meet the ETs, and 
yeah. and they're probably having no contact or they feel like they're having no contact and then they hear that someone is saying go away leave me alone and they're getting a, a lot of contact so do you think there's any rhyme or reason to that well I, what i've found is is that um races contact their own so that's the first thing so about 30 percent of the planet are hybrid star children indigo or whatever you want to call them you know they're just human names and those people are being contacted for various reasons cyan and i we work in, we counsel contactees, abductees, experiences. We help them resolve their point of origin, all these sorts of things. And generally, we haven't come across anybody yet that um, hasn't had some level of uh, hybrid consciousness with them. Uh, this is the big difference. So a lot of the people that are sort of saying, oh, I want contact, I want contact. Who? Who do you want to contact? This is the hmm. thing you'll find that generally people that are being contacted know specifically there's one primary race that's contacting them and a few other minor races. So if I said to you, well, who do you want to contact you? you if you're not a hybrid, you're going to go, I don't know, anybody maybe? And that's not going <laughs> yeah. to work. So is, is it a little bit of knowledge or some sort of self-intuition that's maybe needed it's as well as the, this, the hybridization? side of things it's definitely um i would suggest also that a lot of people that are uh, being abducted don't want to be abducted as well that's you know like mm -hmm. their, their perception of abduction mm -hmm. like taking your children to the doctor for a needle the kids don't want their needle end of story you know they think you're the worst person in the world or the, or the doctor's the worst person in the world um look you know joe in the end there'll be contact when the races believe that humans are ready now Look at the current situation on the planet and then ask yourself, if you're an extraterrestrial, would you want to make contact? With myself or in general? <laughs> Just in general, you know, like with the planet, yeah. you know, you, you look at the behaviour. Yeah, these these, are, these are good questions, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. It's something to ponder in terms of uh, whether you'd be considered as a friend or foe, you know, and all these things. Yeah. And it must be maybe even with all the technology still quite daunting to uh, be in that situation where, you know, the reaction might have effects that, you know. Well, <laughs> well, humans have the potential to seek saviors. That's the problem. Anybody that they have a perception that has more technology, more knowledge, more consciousness, they look up to, i.e. everybody, most people worship something, right? And so, of course, the Zetas have said to us, the issue that they have is that they believe that uh, when ET actually dispose themselves to the human race, that many humans will want to create a new religion. They don't want that. They don't even want to even be seen in that yeah. light in any way. Shape. Yeah. Kind of goes back to, from what I can understand, the days of, of Christ and his message was no don't look at me look at me as the savior and as someone special i'm one with you and and um so what did the romans do they they crucified him and then created a religion around it <laughs> there you go. just to piss him off yeah there you go yeah. Look through history look at look, look at uh, the behavior of humans and if you're an extraterrestrial and you're reading the history of the planet it's very violent mm -hmm. yeah it's uh it's something that we're, we're growing out of I think. <laughs> I hope so. And moving towards, yeah, yeah. And uh, do you have um, family connections? So brothers, sisters, maybe parents who are also connected to the same Zetas? Uh, generally with people, they are generational contacts. Um, but I would suggest that um, because of the type of screen memory technology that's used, that they've probably got class A screen memories and class A means that they have no ability to be able to remember the, um, the, the memories of contact. Other people okay. have class C and class C are the ones that have got the little biometric timers on them. And at a certain point in time, the screen memory drops and the person remembers generally around the age of 40. So. Okay. Well, we'll see. I'm, I'm coming up to 40 myself, so I'll let you know. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I've spoken to a lot of people that have said, oh, no, I've never been taken. I've said, oh, that's all right. Um, tell me your life story. And they'll start telling me their story. And I'll just sit there and go, you know, tig, tig, 
Tick, tick, tick. And in the end, I go, and so you're telling me that you've never been taken and never had contact. And I go, that's right. And I say, lovely to meet you. That was wonderful. And I walk away, I think, class A screen memories. And I don't okay. say it about everybody, believe me. You know, I just don't. It's more about knowing what, what are the signs and not symptoms, what are the signs that someone's been taken yeah. or had contact and they don't even recognise them themselves. What, when you talk about screen memories, can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah. So screen memories are given. I'll give you, and I will go through the categories now because it's not really uh, intuitive for anybody. Uh, so class A memories are the ones that you're given where you can't remember that you've been taken, i.e. you were driving down the road. Next thing you know, you're back in your car. You're about 50 miles away and uh, you've been gone for six hours or something, you know. Yeah. That, that's class A. You just got no idea what's going on. Class B is you're flying a UFO or a UAP and uh, they're teaching you how to fly the UAP and you're having a great time and uh, that's what really is taking place is something else. So something else is happening to you, but you're flying a UFO or having a coffee with aliens. You know, it's, it's, that's yeah. a screen memory. C is when uh, you're possibly contacted or taken, floated out of bed, put up onto a craft, uh, don't really remember anything. You, you just feel like, you, you know, have, in the morning you've been hit by a bus. And then over the days, weeks or months or years, you start to get small bleed-throughs of consciousness. And those Class C one, screen memory technologies are designed to fail. Uh, as you become more mature consciously, you know, everything, uh, what happens is the... the, the the memory drops down, down so that you can take it. Screen memories are only given to humans to provide uh, your local mind or your construct uh, stability. And it's classed as what's called scaffolding. Okay. And when you say class C, is that something that's uh, more uh, physical in nature? You actually, your physical body is part of it, or is that the same for all of them? Or is some of it's it the more same astral? For all of them. It's the same. It's all, okay. it's all consciousness. This is the thing. Uh, you've got an etheric body. Your etheric body uh, is, a, is a mirror image or a mapping of the physical body. And, of course, these days, the technology is able to be placed into the etheric body. Uh, and the etheric body is able to hold the technology correctly as well. That's why it's, it's, that's why they need to do the mapping from when you're yeah. born all the way through so that when they need to apply something to your etheric body and your consciousness, they already know what frequency they need to place it in that. Okay. And what would you say astral travel and out-of-body experiences are within that mapping? Are they... They're not. They're, that, they're not. I've just finished okay. writing a study guide on astral travel, and uh, it's for beginners. And I've astral traveled a lot myself. And I started astral traveling when I was five, which was great, and loved to walk around, had no fear, didn't care about anything. As a kid, just going through walls and everything. It's great. Astral traveling is zero, nothing to do with screen memories. Astral travel is okay. about your consciousness leaving your body and just cruising around. And the same for out of body experiences and yeah. near death experiences, years, I imagine, yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating. <laughs> and um, in terms of trying to um, give evidence for people that might be listening that are quite skeptical of this, what, what kind of. Um, I've heard you before talking about trying to provide evidence and I'm sure it's very difficult to provide evidence and actually possibly impossible with some people because it's not just about providing, it's also about receiving and not everyone's ready to receive, I imagine. Um, but what would you say if someone said, can you provide the evidence? Uh, do you want to answer that question? Oh, okay. Uh, so the thing is with evidence is evidence is for <laughs> specific people. It's, it's, if there was, okay, here's the question back to you. Mm. We know that certain government organisations have the evidence. Why aren't they providing it to the public? Mm -hmm. They've already got it. Why don't they just yeah. give it? So well, if, I'm, if I'm getting evidence and I've got evidence and so is a million other people, multiple millions of people have evidence in various forms, could be things like um, marks that you've been given, could be photographs that you've taken of those marks, it could be... Um, footage, audio recordings. Why? Why would you even bother to put yourself out there 
with the information when we've got CGI, Photoshop, people that troll the internet, we've got all the keyboard warriors. It doesn't matter what you put out there, someone's going to go, that's all rubbish. Yeah, okay. that, that's, that's, that's sort of my thoughts as well. And I was thinking about this when I was thinking about the question is that if someone said, right, Paul, please uh, predict something in the future, tell me, you know, get some information. Um, by saying what the prediction is, you're almost going to change the timeline, change the future, that kind of affects it. So it's kind of, yeah. Yeah, so there is, is the, the case, possibility yeah. to do predictions. Mediums can do mediums can do predictions. They don't need ET contact to do a prediction. Spirits mm -hmm. can actually do predictions as well. It's yeah. more about what is evidence. To me, evidence is you look at a wide range of people that have been unwell, like Kathleen Martin. I'm not sure if you've seen that interview where she states that she was healed of being unwell after 22 years by diseases. You've got other I'm not people actually, not familiar with that if you want to explain oh, okay. that. Well, there you go. She's the ex-international director, director of MUFON that stated that. Uh, we've got other people that uh, have been cleared of specific entities uh, by the Zetas, which are the reptilian uh, beings. We've got other many, many, many people that have been healed by the Zetas that uh, actually have got uh, medical documentation for themselves. If you look in the primer of the Zeta race, which is a free uh, download PDF, there's evidence in there as well. But at some point, I just give up giving evidence. I'm not interested in giving evidence. Mm -hmm. My relationship with the Zetas is what matters. It's science relationship is what matters. Not saying to the public, look, here's another 10 people that were healed because after a while, you just give up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's a, there'll probably be people that are out there thinking, I need to experience this or see something to believe I, it. I, and, you know, you know, I don't I blame to... them. I actually yeah. don't blame them at all. But if you want some evidence, read the primer of the Zeta race. It's written by a scientist. Mm -hmm. There's testimonials on the website as well. All, want to read those. Yeah, there you go. There's all testimonials on our website about yes. the healings they've got from the Zetas. One of them was written by a retired um, government scientist in Canada. So, yeah. <laughs> and a lot of people um, think that to to get to the point where they're able to make contact, they feel that they have to do a lot of inner work, a lot of shadow work, um, work on their um, on just well mending a lot of their issues in their lives and things. Uh, but imagine, given how early. Uh, how young you were when you had this contact you hadn't had a time to do all this so do you think have you been doing that as you've gone through and found more contact has that been a part of the life the sort of shadow work side of things or uh we, or do, a lot of, we do a lot of shamanic work obviously we've got we work with shamanic spirits mm -hmm. um so we don't just work with extraterrestrials person we work yeah. with a wide range of things and, uh, the thing is is um Shadow work. I think that everybody does some level of introspection, uh, yeah. some level of uh, wondering why, all these sorts of things. Uh, do the races actually care if you do or don't? Well, look at what happens. Millions of people, if, if that's true in regards to the numbers, are abducted. I don't believe any of those people were sitting there, you know, chanting on and were <laughs> suddenly taken because they were doing that. They were just taken because that was the, the point in time that they were meant to be taken, okay? Mm -hmm. It's the people that don't have any contact that are going, you know, I think I, I, I should do, if I'm going to do C5, I need to meditate, be clear, provide stillness. And, of course, yes, it does. It helps. It supports you and your consciousness into clarity, into that state of stillness where you're able to perform the C5 protocol. And, yes, it does work. But mm -hmm. the thing is, you've got to ask yourself, what, what is your mind like? When you are still, what is stillness within your own mind? Would mm -hmm. a being want to heterodyne with you? Heterodyne means like binaural beats to have one frequency, say extraterrestrial, mm -hmm. you're the other frequency. Do they want to find a point of contact with you? And it doesn't matter how much work you do, if your mind is uh, not clear or all over the place, a being is not going to want to come. On the other side of the coin, if we want to talk about some other negative entities, 
they'll definitely come and they'll come any time that you want them to come and they'll pretend to be beings that they're not and they'll give people a lot of problems. So people need to be aware that the first thing that someone should be doing is trying to evidence their own contact with any being, even a spirit person, as to who that being actually is. Mm -hmm. Because we're seeing How a lot of people you? at the moment that are being told to get implants by, by beings. And we're saying, don't do it. <laughs> no. How did you find out or how did you uh, discern that the beings that you were in con contact with were benevolent? So what I did was... Assuming they are. <laughs> I said to the Zetas, tell me five things that you're going to do in the next 12 months. And I wrote it all down. And they did every single one of them. And I don't mean like, I, you know, I'll find a feather of the driveway. I mean, like, bring a craft and land it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So because I think list. Them, I'm yeah. just not going to work with you if you don't give me evidence. And did you suspect that maybe they were maybe trying to lure you in, gain your trust before, you know, doing some nefarious activity, which I think could happen, but I imagine not with you. But did, was that something yeah. that crossed your mind? No, absolutely. And so yeah. uh, I remember... Um, when they first came and said, you know, we'd like to work with you, I just said, go away. And for six weeks, they came nearly every second day. I said, listen, there's plenty of other people to annoy on the planet. Go and annoy them. I'm not interested. They would show themselves to me. They would be a few as distortions. I'd have spirit people next to me trying to talk to me. And then an ET would turn up. And I said, you know, I just don't want to work with you guys. I'm just not interested. All right. Mm -hmm. And I think that they realised that because I was so sceptical, I think that my middle name should be Sceptic, because they know that I'm so sceptical, that in the end they thought, we actually will work with this person because they're going to evidence, evidence, evidence to themselves what a contact is. And that's why in New South Wales, the craft actually landed and the beings came out because they told us they were coming. We knew that that was the day that they were coming and that we had gained enough evidence, enough trust with each other that when they said they were going to do something, they actually did it. What, when you say you're, you were sceptical, what, what do you mean by that? Because I imagine you weren't sceptical that they existed, but you were sceptical. Oh, no, you know, I was never sceptical that ET existed. Yeah. I was sceptical yeah. about motives. Okay, right. Yeah. yeah. And, and so the contract is between myself and, and the races is the minute you do anything wrong, anything, it's all over. Okay, both ways, I imagine. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And um, so I, I one might turn on to uh, the, the uh, talking a bit more about the healing side of things. Uh, what, what type of things have the Zetas done regarding healings? Uh, can you, you know, you talked about. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I'm just trying to. There's been so much. <laughs> uh, well, we, seeing as yeah. I mentioned it earlier, we have a testimonial on the website. Um, I retired ex-government scientist. He wrote a paper about how somebody that he knew received an etheric ear from the Zetas. Um, the, the person who had this healing uh, had no ability to hear in one ear, <laughs> right? Okay. Um, no ability at all. And this, the Zetas um, basically worked to create essentially an etheric implant or an etheric ear that was connected to her auditory system so she can actually hear through that ear. Now that was done in, I don't know, 2015? Something like that. The ear's still working now. Um, the ear is tested every year. And uh, if, you, if you go to that testimonial on the website, that's all laid out and presented with uh, all the graphics from the auditory experiments that we use. Mm. We, we've had other healings where they've um, essentially created a, a surg surgical environment, if you like. Um, we've had two people at a time come and lay on healing couches we go into trance to facilitate the Zetas to work. They come in with their technology uh, in an etheric sense, in an energetic sense, although it can still be seen by the physical eye as well as the third eye, if you like. And people have been, well, they've been able to get up off the table and 
do a 5k run where they've not been able to do that for 15, 20 years or on the point of having surgery on their back or they've had um, a, a large skin cancer removed uh, where they were about to have it literally removed the following day with a medical appointment. Yeah, and also you've got people like Kathleen Martin who was unwell for 22 years, well-known globally uh, as Betty and Barney Hill's niece, mm-hmm. states that she was healed by the Zetas. I mean, it, to me... It's, it's all documented. It's all there. People just need to do some research. Yes. Uh, they need to watch some of the videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, and they can see that there's evidence there. Now, at some point, either a person will totally reject what they're saying, or they'll just say, you know, look, there's something going on around this too. We don't know what it is. We're okay with that because we get contact all the time with, with the Zetas and with other races. Not so much these days with a lot of other races, but more about... It's because we evidence. It's like you go to a medium and you say, the medium says to you, look, I've got your grandmother with you. And you go, well, okay, tell me some stuff that my grandmother used to do with me, you know. And so you're going to try to evidence the information the medium gives you about the spirit person. That's common sense. And so the extraterrestrials expect that rather than people just channeling and saying, you know, I'm talking to a being from the ninth dimension or whatever dimension, then there's absolutely no evidence in regards to that or saying that they're working with beings, but or you're being only ever contacted in your dream states and you've got no way to evidence that information. Mm-hmm. Why would they try to evidence themselves? They know that you're not going to ask for any evidence. And so beings, even spirits, Tricks the spirits, they can actually pretend to be ET. And they do. They say, yeah, I'm an extraterrestrial from Sirius A. And the, and the person goes, oh, this is awesome. I've got an ET guide. And the, the, the spirit people are like, this is so much fun. We love this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I imagine uh, that uh, ability, though, is, is coming to an end a little bit. Are people being a bit more discerning now and able to... Oh, that's why we're here. That's why we're talking. We want people to yeah. evidence, to, be, to discern, yeah. to sense. use common sense. And the more we talk about this, the more people go, yeah, I'm starting to really think about what, you know, what's being said now and especially what, what's coming through them. Because a lot of people that are developing mediums, they just seem to you know, abdicate their responsibility as a person to a being. Whereas you shouldn't do that. You should hold on to your sovereignty as a person and then yeah. say, well, if you're who you are, if you are who you say you are, then we were gonna, we're gonna go through an evidential process in regards to that. Yeah, so sovereignty is something that I definitely learned more about in the, since, well, COVID and everything and, and how the media, I realized how much the media was in control of my sovereignty or my decision making. And that was something that I, I wasn't really aware of for a long while. And uh, and that's so important now. I, I feel like that's really kind of given me sort of an enhancement in my own self, my own sovereignty and, and knowledge and seeing, and I guess it's important if I ever meet a Zeta to see them on the same level, would you say? To kind I would of suggest that you yeah. be very careful if uh, any being comes to you and says that they're a Zeta, or any being that you always evidence uh, that so that you uh, you just have to write, ask them to work out how they're going to evidence you and then sit back and wait. Be, be patient in regards to that. Um, it's okay to do C5 and see beautiful flashing lights up in the sky, all that. That's for you, you know, that can be for anyone, a lot of evidence, you know, that you've done the C5 and just having to correlate with a light. Yeah. But when they start talking to people and getting people to do things, I'd suggest that humans uh, at this point really do need to be aware that there are races out there that don't hold humanity in very high regard at all and would probably not be trusted or shouldn't be trusted. And in, so in regards to that, everyone just needs the evidence and use common sense. Are, are you familiar at all with Elena Danan? Sorry, the who? Name? Elena Danan? No, not at all. No. Oh, sure. No, at all. Okay. Someone, uh, someone, I've, uh, there's an, someone I've written a book called Alien Races, and she talks about all the different races. And it's, it's where some of my knowledge has come from. But, I would, you know, if, uh, it's one person. So I would like to hear more from other people. But yeah. a lot of it is is stuff that 
I've picked up from it elsewhere. So, um, but I imagine there's, well, there's thousands out there. It's not that she talks about a hundred, hundred races and just gives a brief on each one. It's quite fascinating. I'd recommend yeah, I it for imagine, anyone who might be, you know, just touching on the subject. Really, I've had, I've met about 10 races. Um, no, a lot of those beings uh, personally, individually as well. Um, some of them have also evidenced themselves, which is pretty interesting. Uh, for the races that haven't evidenced themselves, I sort of keep them at arm's length, which is a good thing. Because the thing is, is once you've actually got a race that's evidenced themselves, you can just say to that race, well, what do you think of the other race? What's your opinion of the other race? Mm -hmm. uh, but if you think about it, say there's 200 million, billion, whatever, uh, galaxies, if there's the potential for one planet from every galaxy, which takes, say, 100,000 light years to cross for one galaxy, there's probably like 200 million, 200 billion races. So, you know. Yeah. And you said there are all these different um, races that you've met, were they all variations of Zeta or were they just all over the place? They're all over oh, the place. In, yep. So yeah, the place, yeah. uh, there's the uh, Sirius A beings that we've had and Sirius B. I've met some um, beings that claim to be from a place called Alpha Centauri. Um, other beings, you know, Palladian. I've met a Palladian entity, very, very lovely person. Mm -hmm. We've had dealings with the Anunnaki, which was great, an awesome experience. Um, just lots of races. It's been really, it's been great. I'm glad actually that they convinced me to to to, to work with them because okay. once you work with a race and you've evidenced them, you're able to then meet all these other races as well. I, I recognise some of those names. Uh, the one that uh, sticks out maybe is the Anunnaki in terms of uh, uh, history. Did you get to learn a bit more about uh, the ancient times from the Anunnaki? Yeah. Yeah, we've um, we've spoken to them a fair bit about their um, history, history, their history, and their history on this planet. Mm -hmm. And what? What did they say? Because I've heard that they were they were here and, and they left and left it to other races. Is that, that right? That they, they, they kind of... Uh... I asked them if um, Sitchin had had help or guidance from them mm. in understanding the uh, Sumerian tablets, Sumerian writings, early writings, King Four and all of that. And they said that they had. And I, and I said are the translations that we have accurate? And they said they are. They, they represent a, an accurate history of what happened. Yeah, there's a, a lot to dis discover there for a lot of people. It'll be quite, quite mind-blowing and much much more dense than what we're led to believe in terms of... Well, if they uh, look up um, the work of Zachariah Sitchin, I'll point them in the right yeah. direction. And is uh, Hamlet's Mill, is that a, the book? Oh, is that a, that's a separate book. Uh, oh, he's, he, yeah. he's not published many books. Yeah, many books. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, on, on the healing side of things, wh why do you think um, some people are healed and not others? So races generally heal their own. That's the first thing. If you're, on a, if you're uh, from another race and you incarnate as a human, then there's the potential generally uh, during contact that you're going to uh, have your immune system somehow go haywire you'll find if you do a bit of research a lot of contactees have a lot of issues with their immune systems uh, so they generally will start healing um, their hybrids or their contactees or whatever uh, so that they can ultimately help them to do the you know the work that they meant to do some people feel that they have specific roles to play um, we, we don't particularly feel that at all for ourselves. Some people are on a mission. We're not on any mission. We don't have a mission at all. Uh, and so other people, we, we question them about this. Why? Why are you healing people? Why are you not healing people? And that's what they said. They said, we heal our own. And then, of course, they then healed 10 people that weren't Zetas. And we thought, well, how does that work? You know, like you okay. said that you don't heal people that are that, you know, not from your race and you've just done that. And they said, yeah, well, we've got free will. If we want to change our mind, we're allowed to. 
we won't okay. argue with that. And we won't argue. <laughs> okay. We let if, them go You know what? If they landed in craft and they healed every person on the planet, I'd say, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. So if anyone's listening right now and, and they want to be healed, what, what do you think they can, they can do to, to initiate that? Is there anything? I think that a person, if they want to be healed, like any other human can uh, speak to source consciousness, speak to the universe, speak to beings, and can ask for healing. Now, um, some people aren't healed, and there's various reasons for that, uh, that, and that's a very big conversation as to why some people aren't healed. Uh, other people are healed straight away. You, you'll always hear of all these dramatic healings when people ask to pray to Jesus or, or whatever, and they, they got a healing. Um, healing is a very, very difficult conversation because there's so many nuances to it. Would they, uh, is there any patterns or time limits that dictate when the Zetas might intervene, as in when they would heal and when they wouldn't heal? The sort of, you, you can do this now, but not at some point. Oh, I was simply saying, yeah. Um, that's a really good question. All right, so uh, it would depend on the current state of the person's health. It would also depend on uh, the cognitive ability of the hybrid to be in contact with the race as well. It would depend on whether a hybrid came across somebody like myself who was like, had contact with the Zetas. And, you know, we do get a lot of requests for lots of different things from people. Can, you know, can the Zetas heal me? Can the Zetas talk to me? Can the Zetas tell me where I'm from before I became a human? We, we get all this, you know, questions all the time. Uh, and so these are areas that we work in because <clears throat> it's not just black and white as to what's going on with, with humanity. That's the difference. Uh, and a lot of things are quite complicated. Some people just aren't ready for contact and not, some people just aren't ready for healing either. Mm -hmm. and, and could the, um, the issues that people are suffering has some sort of karmic element to it that has to be fulfilled? Or do you think all, all issues that people suffer shouldn't be necessary at all? Not, it's not there's no karmic aspect to it. You know, I, I'm sort of in two minds about this. The, um, sometimes I think to myself that there is no such thing as karmic kind of debt, that people just wield it like a sword to, to try to punish others. That's the first thing. And then another time I'll see um, a guide come through from a previous generation, another, you know, like three generations previous, that's still working with that generational line. And I think to myself, there is the obvious linkage in uh, spiritual consciousness to guides. So that's what I, I'm in two minds about that. I think that's um, a, a very interesting subject though. Well, <clears throat> I'm yeah. not, um, I don't think karma exists. And the reason I don't think karma exists is it presupposes that there is a, an event that has happened in the past that you need to pay for. And I don't recognize a past, present, and the future. So there can no, not be any past uh, circumstances that creates a situation where I have to pay a penance or pay a remittance or a reparation for, because there's no past. The second part of it is the, the fact that I don't see the value in that, uh, in having a, a karmic instance that you feel like uh, is a response to some misgiving or adulteration of, of some prior event. If that's the case, we'd spend all our lives doing karmic instances because we spend all our lives screwing up. Mm. Yeah. So that's why I, I don't have. A, I don't have. Hmm? That, Walt, because what, on one moment I actually am I'm thinking the way you are, and then I'll suddenly come across some situation. Well, I'm not going to disclose publicly and uh, with somebody, and then I'll realize that it actually, it's not karmic, it's just generational. I think we need to right. pull that word karma and throw it away. And we need yeah. to go, yeah. okay, if this is a generational problem, that's the difference, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and generational, like in generationally being abducted and having contact is the same thing. That's why I, I just, I discard the word 
karma altogether and just it's just not part of a vocabulary that's meaningful. That's right. we'll, we'll agree to agree. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> well, thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. Okay. No, no, we're all agreeing, you see, because yeah, no, we're in we're in agreement. It's just how we get to this. Yeah, how we get to the same point. <laughs> do you see that um, instead of karma, do you see it as addressing some sort of balance between the dark and light? This, no. I feel the universe is this kind of, this delicate balance no. that has but to be played out. Or is that a dualistic thought? <laughs> thank you. that You just said those words. You see, this is the thing with human, human thinking and consciousness. It's either one or the other. But I'll give an example of the Zetas. When the Zetas talk about time, have you ever seen a plasma ball? They have those little tendrils that light up. Okay. Yeah. That's how they perceive time, that you are at the centre okay. of all these, these undulating little timeline threads that come out. And so they see it from an expansive state of mind. When you ask the Zetas about good or bad, black or white, they're like, that doesn't exist. That's just dualistic thinking. Try and think outside of that, thinking of multiple 